Hello, and thank you for joining us for uh, another installment of Public Works and Infrastructure. I am Lorraine Cochran Johnson. I serve as the chair of PWI. Um, we have, as usual, a robust agenda, and I will do my best to get us through it expeditiously so that we are able to um, hear all agenda items. We will follow the agenda today as written. And the first thing we'll start with are the minutes from July 5th. And I would ask uh, my fellow committee members whether or not you have had the opportunity to review the minutes. And if so, is there a recommendation from uh, the floor? Uh, motion to approve. Second. Okay, we have a proper motion to approve and a second. Um, at this time, we'll put it to a vote. All those in favor of approval, show of hands and words. Aye. Aye. Okay, um, let the record reflect we have approved item 1900. The next item that we have, we'll move now into our previously heard items, is item number 1805. And this particular item is the Georgia um, Department of Transportation contract item agreement for water and sewer facilities project, uh, PIM006292. Resurface State Route 155 from Henry County Line to Interstate 20 in DeKalb County. Um, current estimated cost $432,500. And let me now refer to my notes on this particular item. So here what we have going on is DeKalb County's infrastructure is being adjusted while we are resurfacing. Um, and we're doing this to ensure that we flush, that our infrastructure is flush with the roadway during the resurfacing process by GDOT. Um, who's with us who can speak on this particular item? Good afternoon, Madam Chair. Hi. You are correct. Thank you, so, Mr. Hayes. Doing right ahead. So we are partnering with uh, GDOT as GDOT improves their infrastructure uh, as they're doing maintenance on their infrastructure. Um, we have water and sewer infrastructure in their inside of their roadways, and so we are partnering with them. And what they're doing is raising our infrastructure to the surface level so that we have access to it when it's time for us to maintain our system. And this is one of many that are on the agenda today with such. This is from um, State Route 155 in Henry County, going towards Henry County and um, I-20. And Mr. Hayes, as you indicate, um, two fellow committee members, I would like to point out that item 1809, item, item 1810, as well as item 1811, each are for different amounts, um, but each of these items um, entail the same scope of work. Uh, however, for the sake of recording, we will take them separately. So at this time, um, having your packet and the capacity, and uh, I figure the time has already been taken to read through these items. I'll ask fellow committee members first, are there any questions concerning this work? Madam Chair, no questions. Just a, I love the statement, the department will bear 0% or $0, and DeKalb County will bear 100% or, and then the dollar amount, and that's repeated in all four contracts. So. Uh, but beyond that, no no questions, Madam Chair. Understood. Well, having no questions and understanding the scope of the work, um, we'll walk through each of these. And I would ask um, if there are questions or a motion. So on item 1805 for the State Route 155 from Henry County line to Interstate 20 at 432,500, is there a motion? Make a motion to approve uh, uh, agenda item 1805. Second. Okay, we have a proper motion to approve and second. All those in place, show of hands and words. Aye. Aye. 
Okay, let the record reflect we have approved 1805. Um, the next item in queue and along that same vein is item 1809, and this is the Georgia Department of Transportation contract item agreement for water and sewer facilities project for resurfacing State Route 10 from State Route 8 to the Gwinnett County line in DeKalb County. And the estimate on this resurfacing is 706,000. I would ask if there are any questions concerning this particular GDOT item. Having no questions, I would entertain a motion from the floor on this resurfacing. Uh, yes, Madam Chair, motion to approve item um, 1809, right? Yeah, yeah, that is correct. We have a proper motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor of the approval, show of hands and words. Aye. Aye. Let the record reflect we have approved item 1809. In the same vein, the next item is 1810, which is the Georgia Department of Transportation contract item agreement for water sewer pro uh, facilities project. PI M006327 to resurface State Route 236 from Interstate 285 to State Route 8 in DeKalb County. The estimated cost on resurfacing here is $242,500. Um, are there any questions concerning this GDOT resurfacing item? Madam Chair, I do have a question on this item and the next one. Um, would it be possible for staff to get us a uh, uh, sort of a GIS map that shows the start and finish areas of this. Uh, I think this would be something the residents of District 1 would appreciate, um, sort of having a, a visual story to go with, with whatever details go with the actual agenda item. Understood. Um, okay. I'm sure that is not impossible. Mr. Hayes? Yes, Commissioner, we can do that. Um, this particular one is from the Vista Road to Lawrenceville Highway. <laughs> Your reference, but we'll we'll see if we can put it on some type of GIS map for you. All right, thank you. Um, an email PDF is perfect, uh, Mr. Hayes. Thank you, thank you, yes. Madam Chair. You are welcome. Um, motion Any to approve. Other questions? Sorry. Okay. No problem. We have a motion to approve. Um, Eighteen ten. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor of approval of eight. 10, show of hands and words. Aye. Aye. Okay. And the last item in the series is item number 1811. And this particular item is for Georgia Department of Transportation contract item agreement for water and sewer facilities project PIM006336 to resurface State Route 13 connector from State Route 141 to State Route 13. And the estimated cost of this resurfacing is $50,000. Um, are there any questions concerning this resurfacing? No questions. Okay. Um, if not, I would entertain a motion from the floor. Motion to approve item 1811. Second. Okay, we have a proper move to approve and a proper second. All those in favor, show of hands and words. Aye. Aye. Okay, we are now down to item number 1726. And this is a request for proposals um, for startup operation and maintenance of DeKalb County's renewable fuel facility for use by the Department of Water, uh, Public Works and Sanitation. Um, for the operation, maintenance, and conversion of renewable natural gas to the county's renewable fuels facility. And it has been recommended approval of the highest scoring proposal. And this is Conyers Renewable Power. On this particular item, I do not believe that it has come out of audit. But I'm very familiar with this. This has been a long time coming. So I don't mind having the conversation. Ms. Hutchinson, are you with us uh, here today? I am here. Good afternoon. Yes. Good afternoon to you. Um, 
uh, and I'm, I'm calling on you. I know we've had this conversation since I think around 2020. And uh, I see we now have an item. So can you talk to us about it? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm excited to talk about it. We had an RFP committee. Um, and thank you to all the committee members, uh, included myself and director from Watershed, director from Fleet, and we had Gordon Ken on there. Um, but anyway, did a great job. Purchasing did a great job and walked everybody through the process. Um, we actually had two bids that we evaluated. And so um, we had um, a Conyers Renewable was the um, company that has been recommended for the startup of the green energy, I mean, not green energy facility, the renewable fuels facility. Um, so Conyers will actually go in there. It was just really good to see they're going to go in there and change out the current equipment. They're going to get the plant back up and going. Um, they're going to have a certified manager to make sure the RINs are being sold properly. And then they actually had um, the highest amount as far as revenue sharing coming back to the Cap County Sanitation. So very, very exciting um, to have this actually come to this point right now. Absolutely. I, I know that um, there was a great deal of work to be done in order to get us online um, so that we had the capacity to process our renewable fuels. And this is really big for us. Um, I'm not sure if there's already estimates or projections on savings over time. Um, have we reached that point, Ms. Hutchinson? Well, we will still, so all of our vehicles, Commissioner, as you know, majority, you know, all of our vehicles are CNG. So this plant mm -hmm. will actually, um, with this plant coming back on board now, but actually just, I mean, our costs will still be basically, this, I mean, we still pay the lowest as far as the um, gas go, um, but we will actually be making revenue. So our generation of operation, our trucks will still be the same. The biggest thing is the generation of the revenue and the fact that we have a beneficial reuse for all that gas that's being generated at the landfill that's not going away. As long as that landfill is open, you're always going to have that methane gas. So the beneficial reuse mm -hmm. is, you know, taking that gas and converting it to CNG. Absolutely. And Commissioner Terry, go right ahead with your question at this time. Yeah, so in terms of the um, the audits, it is, were we waiting for the audit to come back? Is that what I heard. Mm -hmm. That is correct. Um, but I, in lieu of time and being as how um, we need to adjudicate as much as we can, we've had the conversation. So on this particular item, uh, I do want to defer to both you and Commissioner Patrick. Um, or if there are any questions concerning the item, uh, I don't feel per se that there is a necessity to defer it other than pending. I would ask that we, uh, you know, move it forward pending audit review. Okay. Unless uh, you all prefer to bring it back to committee and I would be absolutely fine with that is that uh, the requirement for audit for items above 3 million is a standing rule of public works and infrastructure. Do we expect the audit to be finished this week? Uh, I'm not sure, but if it does not, then it will not um, go before the BOC. Commissioner, okay. was the audit, uh, because this is revenue, not expenses, so was it was it triggered based on, uh, uh, RFP is based on the highest number for justification, you know, the engineering justification. This is revenue, not expenses, so the audit was for them to review the scores? Uh, what are they reviewing? Yeah, and, and to renew the projected um, earnings. Okay, the revenue to okay. be generated. Okay, what, what we okay. found is oftentimes folk can't count. <laughs> All right, got it. Well, that was my right, question, um, Madam Chair, was um, because, uh, you know, obviously we see the scoring sheet and Conyers got 80.1 and Venture got 75.9. And it looked the only like the only discrepancy, or I guess maybe the one in the favor of venture was a low point, but it was financial responsibility. So I don't know if a two out of a five meant that that was like, is that a D or is that just it's a two out of five scale? So it, I don't know if it's proportional, but when I see financial responsibility number two, I didn't know what that meant. So, you know, I'm just curious about that. And then I guess maybe to the chairwoman's point, 
because Conyers is saying year 2023, 1.9 million. And then Venture is at 557,000. That's like three times, almost four times the amount. So I guess um, maybe my big question, and I'm, I'm not an expert, so I don't even know whether that is accurate or not. But um, I guess the, maybe the big question is if, if we move forward with Conyers and, and in year 2023, they get 500,000 in revenue in, should we be like concerned? What's our way to, to sort of make sure that these revenue estimates actually bear out what the estimates are? Well, Commissioner Terry, I mean, they're, we're going to be meeting with them every month. We're going to have a meeting with them every month. We're going to know the amount of gas that we generated, the amount of gas that was sold. And then they're going to send us a, a report every month to, to basically um, summarize how did they get to that total. I mean, like, you know, what are they taking in the profit for us? So, so that's a pretty, I mean, we're going to meet with them every month to make sure, because again, I mean, the, the permit, the facility belong to the county. So there is a lot of federal rules that has to be followed. And we sell these RINs, you know, there is a lot of rules that go with that also. So we're gonna be meeting with them every month to hold them accountable. And it's not just revenue also. They have to comply with all our Title V permit conditions. So when you run this plant, there's a lot more to go along with it. But we plan to meet with them on a monthly basis to make sure that the revenue is whole and current and that you know, and that the dollar amount is the percentage that we're supposed to get is, is correct. Okay. And also, I would like to say that after review here of notes from audit, audit, an audit review will be conducted in one year on this item, as well as the monthly reports that Ms. Hutchinson has um, spoken of yes. to ensure that the contractor is generating the expected revenue. Yes. So um, audit has indicated that they're uh, fine with the item moving forward because the bulk of their review will be done on the back end to ensure the generation of the revenue as specified within the actual agreement. So um, with that said, we don't have to hold this item. We can certainly move it forward here today because the auditing will take place um, throughout the agreement and there will be a major audit in one year. Yeah, and we certainly welcome that because we want to be sure that we all stand on top of it. Okay, and then last question. So, um, so this, is a, this is a new source of revenue that we did not have, at least in the last couple of years. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. And then, um, is this uh, is this going to is this included in the revenue analysis that uh, I think you said it was completed that you're going to share with us? No, 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 sir. This was not. Included. Oh, it's not done. Oh, no. Oh. How's the revenue analysis coming? Well, we just finished the the revenue analysis, and um, we haven't we we you know we we went we went over the draft, and the consultant is still working on it, but we're still at it, Commissioner Terry. We just met with them, I think, last week. So we first, we have the re revenue analysis at the first phase. Then the second phase is going to be the rates, where we're actually going to go over the rates. So this money right here, the contract we have is estimated. The dollars amount that we know we're going to get in from residents and or commercial customers, that is what we're working on with the consultant. Okay, well, I'm, okay, so the revenue analysis is done. It is in is in like the next to the final version, almost final version. <laughs> okay, right. well, I was close, I was close. Um, and so is, is this revenue? No, sir, no, sir, analysis? because, because no, again, we're, only, we're only looking at the operations as it stands as far as the uh, landfill transfer stations and what is our current revenue, what is our current operations cost. And then of course, the next phase would be how do we structure that to make sanitation stable or balance it out based on our rates. Oh, okay. And I if I, I if I may um, hold on just a moment, Commissioner Terry, because we I've already asked and I would like to believe that the actions of Ms. Hutchinson um, is the result of the request that this that a firm outline of the findings are brought back to public works and infrastructure. So I am only awaiting the date that the report in its entirety is complete so that there could be a full presentation. Now, as it relates to this particular item, 
um, Conyers Renewable Energy was not initially included in the presentation that was given to us approximately nine months ago, because during that time, this item remained um, an RFP. Uh, it was in discussion. So I would ask that what is brought before us is comprehensive so that we're able to take a very aerial view of the revenues that are out there uh, so that we can make sound decisions on the allocation and how we're moving forward to stop the hemorrhaging of dollars in certain areas within okay, well, that's sanitation. My, that's my point I'm trying to get to. Yeah. And at this time, um, I, I'm sorry, Commissioner Terry, you, any further questions? Yeah, that, I was just trying to get to a point here because if we're not including this in the revenue analysis, then where, do, where does this $26 million go? It doesn't go to the sanitation fund? Um, I see that uh, Mr. Williams um, will respond uh, with an answer. Yeah, and th and uh, thank believe you. I know, but I think that's your job. Well, thank you, thank you, Madam Chair. And, uh, and to piggyback really on what you were saying and to Commissioner Terry's point, um, yes, we have not included this. Um, I would imagine in an update, um, it would be appropriate to include this. Um, we want to, one, get this contract awarded, um, get the notice to proceed and see where we are, um, and then, you know, uh, include that in our anticipated revenue projections. But the work that has been done that really began last fall um, has not included it just because we didn't have it. You know, we, we want to ensure that we're budgeting based on the known. Uh, and so as uh, Director Hutchinson mentioned, uh, we're really close. Um, we have some pretty good numbers on the uh, transfer stations and landfill. Um, I think those rates are pretty close. And now we're just uh, evaluating what the residential and commercial uh, should look okay. And okay. Mr. Williams, I will also say when we say, you know, when we formulate projections, I think the key word to what you said is projection should be based upon the known. Absolutely. Now, what we have here before us are estimates of which we expect to materialize, but very much like with our SPOST program, eHost, and others. Uh, would this be a situation where the first year would be collections and we would not begin an allocation until one year after um, monies are received? Because that, that, that makes sense uh, in order to give us the time to receive funds and then uh, make projections based upon what is in hand. Um, has there been any thought given there? Right, so we would we would ultimately, after the notice to proceed, you know, after the contract is signed, notice to proceed issue, um, I think it's going to require a few months just to see if what we believe was going to happen or what we had contracted for begins to happen. Uh, and then those collections would be, I believe, on a monthly or quarterly basis. Um, and we would just be in a much better position to, you um, you know, ensure are these projections of the $26 million over seven years, uh, do they still hold or are there things that, uh, you know, may change that? Because I don't believe the contract is written in a way that we have a recourse to sue for the money if it does not materialize. Unlike when you're collecting fees, you know, at the landfill, you cannot tip, you know, you can't dump anything unless you pay the fee. Uh, we don't collect your, you know, so it's just a little different in some of those instances. I, think. I understand, and I do understand also that Conyers Renewable Energy is making a lot of upfront investments mm -hmm. in order to bring the facility um, to a and that has to where it has exactly. Um, so I want everyone to be mindfully aware of that. Um, Commissioner Terry, uh, is your question in line with what it already, the questions you had already posed? Because well, I, I, I am immediately no, following no. Commissioner Patrick, I recognize you. No, I don't think I heard the answer, the, the, my question answer, because I was asking where the revenue is going to go to. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just saying sanitation. Oh, yeah. They're sanitation. <laughs> okay, so it's I, I, I guess I could have gone with the short version, sanitation. All right, so all this revenue is going to the sanitation fund right. for use in sanitation services 
but what I heard is we're not including this revenue in the revenue analysis. That, that began several months ago, that's correct. Okay, but right. in an updated so we one, we will. Now we have a, an estimate. Can you hear me? Yeah, no, no, I got you, go on. Okay, now that we have an estimate, um, are we considering adding this into that revenue analysis? I think we will, but I think that would be in an update probably in the late fall, early winter. Okay, after, we, as you said, you wanna see how this goes. Absolutely. Okay, and then the only other thing I'm just, I wanna just kind of put out there, just I might be the only one uncomfortable with this, but Venture Engineering says that they could get 22,821 BTUs a year. And then Conyers says they can get 219,000 BTUs but they're making a heck of a lot more money. And so it's, I mean, it sounds like Conyers has like some special buyer that's gonna pay four times the amount for the same BTUs. Am I reading that right? The BTUs is based on, you know, again, the generation of the plant. And then, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, you're selling the RENs, you are putting the gas into the natural, to the pipeline. So it's based on rates that are current at that time, also Commissioner Terry. So the BTUs know, but, are but just they're, but, they're, so, but everyone's co comfortable with their projections. Mm -hmm. They're not gonna, they're not getting more BT. They're actually getting less BTUs than Venture Engineering, but they're making four times the amount on average. So it, it tells me that someone's buying it for four times more. And, the, and I don't say, how, how does the how does the how does the other vendor? just get completely something way lower? Well, I mean, the BTUs are sold to an to a open market, as you know that. I mean, the RENs, I'm sorry, the RENs. The RENs are sold to, to an open market. And so, so it depends on, you know, if you shell, Hess, whoever you are buying these RENs. And then, of course, it depends on what that rate is also. So, um, but at the end of the day, they're they're willing to they're gonna as Commissioner Cochran Johnson said they're gonna put up all the capital and then they're going to operate the plant and then they're going to take in so much as far as their revenue and then they're expected to give so much back to the Cap County Sanitation okay. at a higher rate than venture. Okay, so these BTUs must be special BTUs because they're not selling more. It's the same amount of it's the same amount of volume. I wouldn't say special. I mean, I mean, well, someone's there, paying there, four times the, the the rate. There is a calculation that was actually done that that we that we looked over a spreadsheet deeply, and I will be able to get you a more technical justification if you want me to get you a more technical justification. Well, I thought that's what the audit part. I thought like we could just, can we just ask audit to just find out I, how much the BTU cost and what goes going on in the market. I mean, that's like a common, they can just go out and look and see what the market rate is. Commissioner Terry, I would be happy to go back because I still have all the paperwork. I'll be happy to go back and look at the spreadsheet that was compared against both vendors. I'll be happy to provide all the commissioners a good solid technical justification. I mean, so there's a little bit more involved with it than just the BTUs. And BTUs are very much like interest rates to an extent. Those do fluctuate. Mm -hmm. So the conversation that we have today may be, may be very different than the one we would have tomorrow, but I'm absolutely fine if the committee so desires to hold this item um, and have a necessary conversation with audit. They have indicated that their work on this would be on the back end to ensure the deliverables of the amounts as stated. So, Gerald Freeman. The fear here, if the fear here is that the uh, Conyers Renewable Energy doesn't have the capacity to deliver as stated, this is a binding contractual agreement. Correct. It's binding. So I would certainly hope that the I's have been dotted and the T's crossed because despite the large discrepancy, I expect to see the deliverables that's outlined here. Correct. And Commissioner Patrick, you've been most patient. I'm going to acknowledge you at this time and thank you for your patience. All right, thank you, Madam Chair. I have a feeling my question's sort of gonna warble into what Commissioner Terry talked about uh, from a different perspective. So 
what if the market doesn't bear what they're offering here, I guess, ultimately is what my question is, is, is contractually what happens at that point? So what each vendor did is, you know, again, when, when we looked at the revenue share, we asked them to look at like a, when they presented it back to the committee, commissioner, it was based on that, like the county revenue is based on 20% of revenue of the MMBTU, 25% mm -hmm. of the revenue above $20 per, per MMBTU, 40% of the revenue greater than $30 per um, MMBTU. So it goes back to what Commissioner Cochran Johnson said, the rates are changing. And right. so we're asking them to do it based on different rates, of course, and what the profit share would be coming back to the county. So it was going to be 20%, 25%, up to 40%. So okay. if the so if the MMBTU got up to $30, $30 the county would get 40% of the revenue. If it, if it was above $20, then the county get 25% of the revenue. Okay. If it's less than $20, the county get 20% of the revenue. And so the revenue could be moving around based on the cost. So that's how they were able to justify the, you know, the higher profit sharing and higher revenue coming back to the Cap County Sanitation. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Okay. So it's Thank based you. On, it is based on price fluctuations. Yeah. I see Commissioner Terry is that. I'm good, Madam Chair. My answers okay. are all right. All right. my answers are handled. Yeah, I think I think that's the answer, Director Hutchinson, is that Conyers in renewable power, they got a better broker. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> I think that's the answer. So I guess all I'm concerned, I mean, I don't want to hold things up because I know it's still a all of this is still projections. Um, but you know, I mean if Conyers renewable you know, if they can indeed do this and, you know, like, and those, I mean, that's some good numbers. It's, it's, it's literally, I mean, venture engineering, 11 million. I, well, when I say, well, there's different tables here, but it's like double, it's double, almost triple the revenue. So let's, let's go for it. Let's give it a try. And I guess if we could just do pending, I mean, I'd be happy to move forward pending audit if we, if there's anything else needs to be delivered officially through audit. But other than that, Again, audit has indicated that their work and due diligence on this will be done on the back end to ensure the deliverables that are outlined within the contract, those numbers that are that are, are being questioned is where their uh, lion's share of responsibility will fall. In one year, there will be a major audit, but there will be monthly reports provided by Conyers Renewable Energy. So I don't particularly feel the need um, to send it to audit, having read um, their response. But I will yield to uh, my fellow commissioners at this time as to whether we're moving this item forward or if there is a desire to send it uh, to audit for uh, review. Madam Chair, I'm comfortable moving it forward and I'll Go ahead and make the motion, unless Commissioner Terry has any objections. Uh, motion to approve 1726. Second. Okay, we have a proper move and a second. All those in favor, show of hands and words. Aye. Aye. Okay, so we have moved forward. Um, this particular item, bear with me here, multitasking a bit to my own peril. Okay, and let's see if I can figure out where I was before the robust discussion. Thanks for your patience with me.
Okay. I have been able to revive my agenda. Okay, and we are now down to item number. Hold on, the wheels of the bus on the bus are going around and around. Perhaps it's time for a new computer. Is it 1626? So you got Commissioner Patrick? That is where we would be. Item number 1626, and this is to authorize the transfer of property and permanent easement to the Georgia Department of Transportation for traffic signal improvements. And now let me refer to my notes on item 1626. Um, this is an agreement with GDOT to transfer county-owned property and easements for traffic signal improvement projects. Um, three parcels already owned by DeKalb County are affected by the project. This item will authorize transferring to GI the property and easement on those parcels that are required for the project completion. Construction is uh, being paid for entirely by GDOT. Um, $24,178,000 will be reimbursed to the county from GDOT for site improvements within the transferred property and easement area. Um, who is available to discuss 1626? Uh, yes, commissioners, I can uh, talk about this item. Uh, we've been partnering with uh, GDOT on this project for, I think since 2007. Um, and uh, I think our longest running project. Um, uh, we, our role in the project has been to acquire the right of way, and uh, we have been reimbursed by GDOT for um, our costs in acquiring the right of way. So at this point, we've acquired all the parcels uh, except for, for one other parcel and for the, the transfer of the small amount of prop, uh, county property that uh, is uh, being addressed in this item here. Uh, so the properties in question, uh, you should be familiar with. It's right in front of the Maloof building at uh, Swanton Way and at uh, West Trinity Place, and also at the uh, little bit of property over by the uh, courthouse at uh, Trinity at McDonough. And uh, there is uh, some impacts. The $24,000 has to do with... Uh, site improvements that will be affected. There's some landscaping out there. Uh, there is a wall that will have to be relocated. And so we're gonna be uh, reimbursed for the cost of uh, moving the wall. And we've had, uh, had discussions with, uh, uh, coordinated this with uh, facilities. Understood. I would ask uh, fellow committee members at this time, are there any questions concerning 1626? Where's the, you said there's gonna be a wall on the corner out here, our building? There's a uh, retaining wall at the corner of uh, Commerce and Trinity. On our side? By, by the, on the Maloof side. Um, and so that would have to get moved back a few feet because one of the mast arm poles is going to go there. Okay, so it'll, just be, it'll be torn down and then just moved back in the same right. place of construction. That's correct. Gotcha. Okay. No further questions. Any further questions on 1626? Okay. Um, seeing none on this particular item, it's fairly self-explanatory. Um, I would ask whether or not there is a motion from the floor on 1626. 
Yes, Madam Chair, I'll make a motion to approve item 1626. Second. Is there a second? Okay, all those in favor of approval, show of hands and words. Aye. Aye. Okay, let the record reflect we have approved 1626. The next item that I show is item 1825, and this is a cooperative agreement for uh, garbage and recycling roll carts for use by public works and sanitation, <clears throat> consists of piggybacking off the competitively let contract cooperative council of governments, number 2113B, for the purpose, uh, I'm sorry, for the purchase of various sizes garbage and recycling roll carts awarded to Auto Environmental Systems North America, not to exceed 2 million. And hold on, let me go to my notes on 1825. Um, looks like the county will save 2% by utilizing the competitive agreement. Um, Ms. Hutchinson, I would assume that this is probably you, but who is here to speak to this? Um, and uh, I'd also like to know how many um, units approximately, is there a number that's associated with this particular allocation? So uh, yes, Commissioner, um, the roll carts is for sanitation and it is for our um, residential roll carts that we use. Um, this $2 million is for the term of the contract. I think the contract is like for three years. And so that's the total amount that we expect to spend for the term of the contract. So we buy the uh, units, the roll carts as we need them. We order them by truckloads. So like a 95 gallon truckload will be delivered. I think it's like, I want to say 540 carts on a truckload. And so, um, but we ordered the standard 95, the 65 gallon recycling and the 35 gallon recycling. We just order them as we need them and keep them in inventory so we don't run out. Um, did I answer your question, Commissioner? I just wanna be sure I answered your question. You, you did. Um, now I know that it hasn't been so long ago uh, that we had the discussion on roll carts. And, um, you know, I'm trying to understand uh, of course, I know that we uh, are in the process of swapping. We're going from, I believe, the, the 60 gallon to, is it the 90, 95? Right. So whatever, well, right. So for years, uh, the county had the 65 gallon roll carts. And then we've, uh, we've done two swap projects uh, that we were, uh, had funding for. The first project was 43,000 roll carts. And the second project was 14,000 roll carts. So we have done two swap projects, but those are special projects, but the standard roll cart for the county residential right now is 95 gallons. Um, okay. But currently this year, I, uh, the, the, the 14,000 swap project was, was this year. We started it after MLK holiday and we did it for um, primarily Stonecrest area. It, you know, it was primarily in that area. But if a resident- Go ahead, I'm sorry. No, no, you finish your statement. If a resident um, is a new resident or if there's any issues with your roll cart, um, the cart that you would get now is a standard 95 gallon. Understood. And I, I know that we were doing the disseminations in phases. Um, where are we? Have we issued all 95 gallon carts um, at this point? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. The SWAT projects, like I said, those are special projects that we, you know, we got to get funding for. Um, but there is still some residents with 65 gallon roll carts. Okay. So, so we you... service 170,000 residents. So the projects itself, the two projects we had, one was for 43,000, you know, households. And the other one was for approximately 14,000 households. Um, but if there's any issues with any resident cart that they currently have a 65 gallon, they, uh, we'll swap it out. Sometimes we could fix them depending on his wheels or axles, but, uh, now, you know, everybody gets a 95 gallon. So the numbers are higher. Most of the, you know, a lot of homes do have the 95 gallons. 
Well, and, 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 you know, now this raises a question because you said we've done two separate rollouts, one with 43,000, another with 14. Mm -hmm. Um, of course we have 170,000 people that are receiving Mm -hmm. sanitation services. And this is, um, we're now ordering as needed. So this 540 carts, I would think would be going out as a part of another rollout. But are you saying that these carts are needed to replace existing carts? And if so, okay. So with that being said, when we're replacing carts, is there any cost to our residents for those carts? The first cart is a complimentary replacement. So if there is, you know, a resident, if there is any damages or something happens to the cart that's not initiated by DeKalb County Sanitation, it is a complimentary replacement. The second cart, the resident will pay a fraction of what we pay for the cart. They will pay us for the cart. But the first card is always a complimentary replacement. Okay. And the second half of that, because when we bought these side load trucks, of course, the 95 gallon containers became necessary. So I know that we do not have the side load carts in all communities. I'm my concern, and I'm trying to figure out, I wouldn't call it a concern. Is, is it in our best interest to move rapidly towards the dissemination of the 95 gallon carts in any way? Does that affect the productivity of sanitation or not? No. 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 Because, because the ASL truck can still pick up a 65 gallon. So, so that arm can reach out there and pick up a 65 or a 95. So as long as it's containerized in the county county issued roll cart, all households have the county issued roll cart, whether it's a 65 or 95, all county households have them. The ASL truck can pick up 65 or a 95. It could be garbage or recycling. That truck could pick up a whatever cart, you know, the cart that's out there. So, it's, so I mean, so as it stands right now, um, like our recycling cart is 65 gallons. We service those routes with that ASL truck so they could pick up 65 gallon. Understood. And, and I, I do realize that whether it's a 65 or a 95, we will service it. But in terms of, you know, an average home and the amount of litter that it generates, I, I would be inclined to believe that a 95 gallon better serves the needs of residents because if not, then there's additional bags of trash and that becomes a totally separate issue correct so in the spirit of trying to contain the trash so that it's an easier lift no pun intended for our workers i would think that there would be some desire to move more expeditiously toward the 95 gallon but i see other commissioners have questions and the first hand that i did see was commissioner terry so please go ahead at this time Thank you, Madam Chair. I um, you answered a lot of the questions, so thank you. So I see that we have 504, 95 edge. That's what they call it. 95 edge, 65 edge. So that's 95 gallon, 65 gallon. And then what is the 45 G and the 35? Ed, what was that again? So Commissioner, so there is the standard household cart is a 95 gallon roll cart, and as Commissioner Cochran Johnson said, that is the what we call the right size carts for households, that 95 gallon. And then you have the 65 gallon blue recycling cart, which is the bigger recycling cart. Then you have a 35 gallon recycling cart. And then some homes, like if you're in a town home, the 95 gallon is too big. So you get the 45 gallon green trash cart. Gotcha. Okay, good. I'm in Clarkston, so we have a different service, unfortunately. I'm sorry. Um, right. So I don't have any experience with this. Um, <laughs> but um, okay, gotcha. And so, so these are all just replacement carts. These are that, that, that yeah. replacement and or new residents that come to the county. Oh, new residents. Yes, yeah. you just new residents have to set up their sanitation services, and a new resident would get the right. 95 gallon cart. And then if they participate in the recycling, they would get the 35 gallon as a complimentary card. 
or they could pay a one-time payment of $15 and get the 65 gallon recycling cart. Most residents get the 95 gallon, of course they're gonna get that, and they get the 65 gallon recycling. Because if you're a true recycler, the 65 gallon is what you really need. That's right. If I had that, I'd fill it up every week. <laughs> Let me tell you. I got in Clarkson, we got these little the little bending I bend over in my back, you know, I'm getting old, Director Hutchinson. Um, but um, okay, interesting. And then um so you said there are new residents, but I think what you're really saying is those are new units. Those are new housing units. And I think you, you have, know, it, 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 we'll, we'll right. take credit for that right over here at the Board of Commissioners for those zoning okay. cases. <laughs> there is a lot of new construction in DeKalb County. That is true. <laughs> we're, we're, we're growing. We're trying to see progress. Economic development, baby. <laughs> All right. Thank you. No problem. And also, Commissioner Patrick, as usual, thanks for your patience. Go right ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, <laughs> Tracy, I think you might have answered the question already. If I have a resident that wants to keep their 65-gallon cart, uh, and this is primarily some of the seniors that we have in District 1, uh, as well as, um, not that I always check people's trash, but when I was out on the back of the truck, I did notice that, you know, some houses only have a, like a Kroger bag's worth of garbage for the week. Um, and so, you know, a 95 gallon might be more than what they need. And I've also had some seniors make comments that the larger carts are a little too heavy for them to handle on their own. But so if someone wants to keep a 65, they can keep a 65. Absolutely. We're not, we're not going to go back and forth with you about that. If you want to keep your 65, keep your 65. When we did the swap project, we actually um, kept a spreadsheet that we went over every week. And we made sure that that resident got a brand because we took their 65 gallon mm -hmm. because the, the, the process was we pick up all the cans and then in turn, we actually came back and gave them a brand new 65. Wow. Okay. All right. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Tracy. I appreciate the answer. Mm -hmm. Okay. No problem. Are there any further questions concerning 1825? Okay. If not, I would ask whether or not there is a motion from the floor on the purchase of these um, roll carts. Uh, motion to approve. Second. Okay, we have a motion to approve and a second. All those in favor, show of hands and words. Aye. 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 Okay, let the record reflect. We approved 1825. The next item that we show is item number 1854. And this is a low bid invitation, uh, McAfee Road sidewalk from Candler Road to East Lakeside Drive uh, for use by Public Works and Transportation for the construction of curb and sidewalk along the south side of McAfee Road and Candler Road uh, to Barker Bryant Park. Recommended award to the lowest responsive and responsible bidder in the amount of $375,132. Um, this one is very self-explanatory. Um, just, well, during our last meeting, um, we approved the monies necessary for the removal of the lines that now make it possible for us to approve 1854. Um, this money will come from SPLOST Category 1C. Um, on it, we had two bids that were received. And reimbursing Georgia Power for relocation of the cost. Yeah, that happened last week. So that being said, this finally gets us to the side box for which um, this is uh, commission, commission Districts 3 and 7. Commissioner Larry Johnson has followed this particular item. Uh, and, you know, of course, we're all very excited because sidewalks are very much needed in this community. So I would ask at this time, is there anything that anyone uh, from the uh, staff or administration would like to say about 1854? I think you covered everything, but I can answer any questions you may have. Okay, I have none, um, and I will at this time, uh, Commissioner Terry, go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair. I was just trying to, um, I was looking for like the, I guess the documents on sort of the design and the, you know, just like, I guess like the 
more detailed documents on it. I just see the bid tabulation, but so are these um are these like the the old sidewalks or the new sidewalks, like in terms of the width? Uh, this is going to be the uh, five foot sidewalk. Five foot sidewalks. Okay. Okay. Or was, can I just ask a, just a general question? Is the is the policy sort of moving now to do the ten foot sidewalks, or do we have sort of a? I know we have the six foot and a bike lane kind of formula as well, but um, can you just remind remind me sort of what is the what is the standard that we're going for for sidewalks? I, I will allow Mr. Pelton to respond, but in some of our communities, due to the width of the street, it's not possible to go with the wider sidewalks. So I believe um, that we are working on a case by case basis um, because in some instances, it would require a widening of the road in a, or actually uh, a road diet that is not <laughs> possible um, to facilitate a wider sidewalk. But Mr. Pelton, I, I want you to officially respond to that question. Yes, yeah, so where we're where we're trying to add um, sidewalk in the kind of existing neighborhoods, we've generally done the five feet unless there's an opportunity to, you know, where there's extra space uh, that might be available to do something wider than that. I mean, ideally, you'd want to have a, you know, a 10-foot sidewalk, but in a lot of places. But uh, the standard for just retrofitting in an existing neighborhood would, would be the five feet. And that's pretty much what's all around that. Understood. Any further questions um, from Mr. Pelton, Commissioner Terry? No, Madam Chair. Okay. Um, Commissioner Patrick, any questions from you on this particular item? How soon can you get in the ground? <laughs> That's the only question I got. I love sidewalks and trails and, and um, um, you know, DeKalb County is a large county. It's hard to just wake up one day and say, let's get it done. Uh, and so the piecemeal approach is what we have to work through. Take it one bite at a time and, and we'll get there. So um, I'm happy to support this, Madam Chair. Absolutely, and uh, so am I. This is, uh, it's, it's much needed. I won't use the term long overdue. Um, we are working as quickly as we can now to get these sidewalks installed. So very thankful for our SCLOS dollars. And if there's no further questions concerning 1854, I would ask for a motion from the floor. I'll make a motion to approve 1854. Second. Okay. All those in favor, show of hands and words. Aye. Aye. Okay. So we will now have sidewalks along McAfee uh, and Candler. So thank you all. And our last item of the day, and uh, thank you all for working with us here. We moved expeditiously because of so many being associated with the GDOT project, is item number 1935. And this is a change order. Uh, number four, for consent, uh, consent decree program management services for use by the Department of Watershed and Management. Uh, this contract consists of providing program man management services in furtherance of the consent decree. Um, this is a request to add the Department of Public Works, Roads and Drainage to the contract and increase the scope of work and funding. It is awarded to CH2M Hill Engineers, AKA Jacobs Engineering Group, uh, amount not to exceed 500,000. And do allow me to take a look at my notes on 1935. Um, it looks like with the addition of, of um, public works on this particular contract, it'll allow um, and enable roads and drainage to address high priority issues. 
Um, there's been a lot of media inquiries into sinkholes in the county, and CEO Thurman wanted to take action in assisting the Department of Watershed Management in addressing those issues by adding public works to the contract to assist with the management of stormwater and drainage projects. Um, the City Works application was implemented in 2016 in the Department of Watershed Management through assistance with Jacobs and the IT department um, to add the necessary layers to ensure it connected to the GIS system. Communication strategy will be developed to provide information to the community. Okay, let's, let's have uh, someone speak to this item. Madam Chair, John Matelski on behalf of Innovation and Technology. Um, as I did mention also in the Ops Committee meeting, we're on a different item for CityWorks. We are progressing uh, very aggressively to put forward uh, and, and, and expand CityWorks for use across all of the uh, folks that can use it, both for asset management as well as for workflow of, of uh, work orders that come about from that as well. And as I also mentioned, this would be coming up. I just wasn't sure which committee. Um, Watershed has really done an exceptional job uh, with the Jacobs team, and we want to make sure that we can bring that same level of expertise and to take a look at roads and drainage and, and really other aspects potentially within the public works area to ensure that we can leverage this solution as well as we are doing it in Watershed and continue to expand it for others, including transportation down the line as well. Understood. Now, from fellow committee members, are there any questions? Madam Chair, I do have a question, but I got to find it on my phone, first of all. Um, uh, okay. It's the integration of the um, ArcGIS. Um, first of all, I appreciate the fact that this is happening. You know, I'm familiar with ArcGIS myself and um, never used CityWorks, but from what I'd seen from demos, it seems like it's a very powerful way to integrate workflows and ultimately communicate with our residents. And I was doing a little search on the internet and it might be, yeah, ArcGIS Quick Capture. So I guess my question is, is, you know, I, I know that the county staff are gonna have all of these levels of integration across all the different departments, but it would be a sure benefit for our residents if, if they had sort of a, a C click fix type app or something that integrates with um, um, ArcGIS, where when they see an issue, <clears throat> they can report it back. But also when they see this, you know, these products right here that we're using at the county level, if they have access, some level of insight so that they can see what's going on and the progress that's being made throughout this, you know, seven year process to, to get our sewer system fixed. And I'm hoping also our stormwater system uh, fixed. So it's a question statement. Thank you, John. And, and let me say, Commissioner, um, you know, I, I have been a huge proponent in the use of GIS technology to educate, engage, and enlighten our residents. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe to date, the best use of such technology has been on our SPLOST website, which gives um, literally a real-time account of where we are with road resurfacing. And through the use of three simple colors, green, those are uh, roadways that have already been resurfaced, um, yellow are in progress, and red are approved but not yet begun. And I know personally, as I speak with the residents and educate them and carry them over to the website and teach them how to use the tool it's extremely beneficial. Um, you know, each and every time we have these discussions, we always go back to technology and creating maps in various forms for various departments, whether it be sanitation or actually, uh, I think one that could benefit most from such a thing would be um, code compliance. Um, and making them aware, you know, even when we talked about recently, um, the, 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 not the, 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 the metal plates that are on the road, where they are, uh, 
Mm -hmm. and tracking those. And it would also allow us, as those are entered, to give in real time, generate data as to how many days uh, they are in place. But residents would be painfully aware. So um, your statements are very timely. I think we must get there because we still have a long way to go as it relates to educating community, providing data in real time at the fingertips of residents. Uh, and I'm not sure there is a response, but we've certainly made the cry again and again. So um, I was thinking that by now I would see the face of COO Williams because I know he wanted to comment. <laughs> Madam Chair, I think everything that, that needs to be stated is being stated. Um, and we're glad that we're responding to um, you know, not only your requests and statements in the past, um, we also feel that this move, quite frankly, will ultimately assist us in elevating and better organizing how we respond in stormwater um, and using the model that was created in the uh, Department of Watershed Management using, you know, bringing in project managers and program managers is only going to make us much more effective. Uh, Director Matowski mentioned how we will share data and information with the residents, but we're also just gonna manage things better. Um, and because we're anticipating adding more and more money over time to getting things repaired. Um, so it's gonna be critically important that we're organized in a way that people can see what we say we're gonna do and we can hold ourselves to account that we get it done. So this will be helpful for all that. Understood. And Madam Chair, if I just may add one last thing. Yes, absolutely, Mr. Matelski. Thank you so much. And I know Commissioner Patrick uh, did have a reference to C-Click Fix. We actually, as part of our overall rollout of our Oracle CRM uh, 311 system, are planning on doing something similar to that uh, particular type of solution. Uh, don't know if it's the solution we have is actually more robust. The great thing about Clips Fix is it's easy. People can just go in, bing, bang, boom, and they're done. So we are looking at where that happy median is. What I will say, though, is working with Stacey Greer and his team in the GIS department, along with the Public Works uh, GIS team, Watershed, um, we are looking at all aspects of integrating three primary systems, that being the city works that we talked about, which is going to be the asset management as well as uh, workflows and the uh, work order management systems, the GIS system, and the Oracle 311 system. So in fact, we're already working with Peggy and her team, getting her mm -hmm. data into the system. And so the unfortunate thing is we just we it, it's not something where we could do a big bang theory. So we started and worked with certain areas and now Peggy's team is coming in there. We'll have transportation at some point. And all of these systems we've been modernizing over time, working again with Stacey Greer and his team as well. Uh, and so I think really what I'm just trying to say is when you're trying to upgrade and keep three systems modernized, the integrations are usually the last thing that go along with that, getting those okay. systems then to talk to each other. And that's really where we're at as we're trying to time all of these things and get folks moving along so that we could uh, create uh, some great efficiencies uh, while continuing to drive innovation throughout the organization. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you, John. And thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, um, seeing none, I would ask um, whether or not there is a motion as it relates to 1935. Move to approve item 1935. Second. Okay, all those in favor, show in, of hands and words, aye. Aye. Okay, so let the record reflect, we have also approved 1935. Now, unless I'm working from a bad agenda uh, and there was something that's added, I do believe that we have um, successfully addressed all items that were presented. Uh, so I'm now going to ask, uh, are there any other matters to come before the Public Works and Infrastructure Committee today? All right, seeing none, um, I would thank you all for joining us today and for all those who worked so hard to help me move this along. Um, 
I'd ask now from fellow committee members, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.